Providence College hockey fans. Welcome to this week in Friars Hockey presented by Cox. I'm Nick Rojas. You couldn't have asked for a better finish to the month of January for the Friars. Winners of a pair of games over top 10 Northeastern. They grab four points, move up in the rankings in Hockey East, and move into the top 10 nationally. This weekend, they look to do it all over again, this time at home against the Vermont Catamounts. On today's edition of the show, we grab a few highlights from the Coach Lehman Radio Show, which aired earlier this week. Let's start the show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Nate Lehman Hockey Show. Mike Logan along with you, and we are live again tonight at the Abbey, 686 Admiral Street, along with uh, head coach Nate Lehman. Well, as they say, Nate, what a difference a week makes. We sat right at this same table uh, last Tuesday. You guys had uh, lost three in a row, a little confidence uh, loss there, but you have a good weekend at Northeastern, a sweep, and I would think the guys feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was good. We had a good week of practice last week, and we, um, you know, and uh, that was good for us. You know, it's it's healthy sometimes. It brings your team together. Um, and, you know, the key is, is not letting the, the good weekend success go to our head, you know, and knowing that we were successful on the weekend because we worked hard last week in practice. Um, those things carry over to the games, so that's our focus right now. We talked before the uh, the game on Saturday night how, you know, the good teams in that league, they're the ones that get the four-point weekends, and you guys came out, and uh, I thought, in many respects, played even a better game on the road Saturday night. Yeah, we, we played pretty well. I, I was just more encouraged by the work ethic of the guys. I mean, that's uh, – we really worked hard Saturday night, you know, and and, uh, and I didn't realize it as much. I mean, I knew we played a good game, but then I when I watched the tape afterwards, boy, you really saw how hard we were working. And what I mean by that, the feet were moving. You know, every guy's feet were moving. We were taking away space. Um, we were attacking with speed. So, you know, hopefully we can, um, you know, continue to do that. I mean, we're trying to, in practice, make sure the pace is there. Uh, similar to last week to make sure that the feet are moving like they were. They should. One of the things on the weekend, your penalty kill was excellent. Uh, I think it was 0 for 7. Northeastern was in the power play. Plus, you got the two shorthanded goals uh, on Friday night. Has anything changed here over the last couple of weeks? It's been consistent throughout, but I thought maybe a little more aggressive this weekend. No, I mean, not, nothing's really changed. We know the power play pretty well from playing against it last year. Um, the guys are locked in against it because they know it's a very good power play. But, you know, the big thing that's changed now is the referees don't make as many calls you know it's it's the time of year where they don't they don't want to make a big difference in the game so you know both nights we killed three penalties um, the first night we had three power plays the second night we had two so you know basically in hockey east as, as things go you know you know as a coach that uh, the referees don't like to you know they, they don't want to make the difference in the games a lot of times so um, there's less calls in the second half and uh, um, so when you put on those specialty team situations are a little bit more important and you got to be a little more plugged in. But it's also when you're killing, when you're only killing three power plays a game, it's a lot easier than when you're killing five or six. Absolutely. And uh, you got good goaltending over the weekend. I thought Hayden Hockey was really battling and very aggressive on Saturday night. And, uh, you know, you needed that in a tough place to play. And, you know, and only give up one goal against a team like that is pretty good. Hayden was excellent Saturday. He looked like he was uh, the same form he had probably first five six seven games of the season that's that's a great sign for us um, you know he, he just he looked confident he looked athletic the way he played um, and he did a great job with his rebounds all right Vermont is in this weekend um, are you glad that they won a couple coming in because they had struggled they lost five in a row is, is that a situation you'd rather have a team get a couple under their belt as opposed to you know now having lost seven in a row before they get you no I probably I'd rather that they're coming okay. losing but because they wouldn't have any confidence but you know, it's uh, no. I mean, it's we. They they really gave it to us last year, so we know we have our hands full. They have our respect, without a doubt. Our guys know that. Um, it's an older team. They got a lot of 23 and 24 year old guys, um, and they you know they play heavy. They they make sure they bump your goalie. They you know the, around the nets and things like that. It's. Uh, you know, it's it's going to take everything we have, and and that's the focus I've had with the team. 
Mike Logan joined now by Teresa Feaster, who is the director of uh, hockey operations for the school. Thanks for taking some time out and joining us. Thanks for having me, Mike. I know your first couple of years, uh, an extra set of eyes, you did a lot of different things. Um, obviously, that has transitioned uh, now being director of hockey ops. One of the things I want to talk to you about, I never played the game of hockey. I've watched a lot of hockey, but I'm amazed when I watch you and the coaches break down film. You know, I'm watching a game, I'm watching the puck. And then I watch you guys break down the film and the different things you're looking at. How long did it take you to, to really get a, a confidence and a feel of exactly what you needed to find? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think part of it, um, obviously there's sort of the technical aspect of just learning a, a video editing system. Um, so just sort of getting used to that is, is one thing. But um, just sort of from the way I grew up, I, I was always very comfortable with just sort of watching a game mm -hmm. from like a systems perspective, um, from you know execution what are we doing well what are we not doing well who's playing well who's not playing well um, so I was kind of used to watching a, a game um, in that way I mean I was I was a big time hockey nerd so I used to watch all the you know VHS tapes that the coaches would put together of systems and, and you know I was right there watching with my dad or you know sitting in after games with the coaches watching them break down film so the, that aspect of it I, I was kind of used to but um, definitely getting used to new video video editing software, things like that. It, it does take a little time, but once once you get used to it, it it's like riding a bike. Final segment of the Nate Lehman Hockey Show, Mike Logan, joined by Junior V. Suku Moran. Uh, v, thanks for taking some time to join us. Thanks for having me. Coach talked about it's a good leadership group in the room. You're a part of that. Uh, when you guys kind of hit a bump in the road here and you lost three in a row, what was the feeling uh, around the team with the guys uh, you know, going through that? You know, the the guys, for the most part, were pretty were pretty positive. I mean, there's not the, game, the weekend's over, it's over with, and you can only look forward. And so the older guys kind of understood that, understood the process and what we used to do over the past two years to kind of get over that hump, and that's just simply to work hard. So we made sure that we were the ones to go in on Monday and set the pace and then have the rest of the team fall. And by doing so, we were able to get two wins this weekend, and two big ones for that matter. For a breakdown on the matchup with the Catamounts, we send it down now to Mike DeMars. Mike? Thanks, Nick. The Friars will open up a two-game home set against the University of Vermont on Friday. The Catamounts are 10-13-1 on the season, but have won two in a row after sweeping Merrimack last weekend. Forward Max Kaufman leads Vermont with seven goals this season, and his eight assists are the second most on the team. The sophomore also scored the overtime winner against Merrimack to complete the Catamount sweep over the Warriors last weekend. Senior Liam Kaufman is tied for the team lead in assists with 10 and is tied with Kaufman for the team lead in points with 15. Guarding the net for Vermont is junior Stephanus Lekis. Last season, Lekis recorded 74 saves in two games against the Friars. This season, Lekis has started every game for the Catamounts. The Friars will have the opportunity to gain some ground in the standings as the teams that are ahead of them in the conference only play one game this weekend. That's your weekend preview. Sending it back to you, Nick. Thank you so much, Mike. That'll just about wrap up today's edition of the show. Thank you to Mike Logan and to Coach Lehman for doing my job this week. Appreciate you. It's a busy weekend here in Shiner Arena. Friday night is our second annual Drop the Mitts for Drew Brown night, where we'll honor his life and legacy. Saturday night is Skating Strides, which benefits the Gloria Gemma Breast Cancer Resource Foundation, which is a great cause. Both games start at 7 p.m. and tickets start at $20. If you can't make it out to the rink, Saturday night's game is on NBC Sports Boston, and both games are on the radio on News Radio 104.7 FM. For all the post pictures, updates, and more, head to Friars.com and follow the team on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching This Week in Friars Hockey, presented by Cox. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.